welcome to Retro Vehicles and Machinery. My name's Richard, and I've got another part on my, well, on the Series 2 Land Rover that I'm rebuilding. A little update on this one. So I've had this whole load of stuff delivered in the post. I'm um, rebuilding the front axle. Had a pair of brake drums through, a pair of, uh, front axle set of shoes, set of wheel cylinders, a front pinion seal, front bump stops, although I do need to weld a bracket on the chassis for one as it's missing. Um, a set of front spring eye bushes with bolts, a set of new lock tabs for everything that's bolted together on the front axle, and a set of nuts, some new lock nuts for the swivel bolts where they bolt on because the lock nuts have rusted away pretty much to nothing. And in here, we've got some brake hoses. So that's not a bad start with the front axle rebuild. Um, I plan to put it all together as like a, a rebuilt unit and then bolt it straight in. So there's a few other bits and pieces I'm waiting for, some steering joints. Uh, what I have noticed is the diff pan here has a rust hole through where well, I've chalked it up there. So oil is coming out of this area here. So it's still got oil in, which means hopefully it hasn't been run dry. Uh, but probably where it was sitting, it's just the elements have got to it and rusted it through. I have ordered a front diff pan for it. It's only about 40 quid um, with a new filler plug in it and everything. So hopefully that will turn up at some point. And I'll, I'll cut this one off and re-weld a new pan on there. So that's good. But yeah, this is the situation I've been faced with with the bolts for the... Um, swivels where they bolt onto the axle. The nuts have just rusted away to nothing. Believe it or not, I have managed to get them all undone. Um, there's another one, look. So that's not healthy. So I've, I've ordered those. And this, the lock tabs, this is the situation we've got here. These are the lock tabs on top of the block that holds the top of the swivel together. And it's all just falling apart. That side's not too bad, but we've got some new ones, so we'll sort that out. But the spring eye bushes are all shot, so they've all just collapsed. And time's took its toll on them. That one's fell out completely. So we've got some bushes to do. So this little video will hopefully be me um, rebuilding this front axle whilst it's out of the vehicle up on these trestles. I lifted it up with the engine crane this morning, put it on the trestle so I can work on it. It's a horrible day raining outside today, so I thought, well... I've got some bits, we'll focus on getting this axle rebuilt. So I'm going to start, I think, changing the nuts on these swivels so that at least the swivel's bolted back to the axle properly. They're 5 8 span size, these nuts, but as I say, I already managed to get some heat into them and free them up. So hopefully, these are the right thread. They were a... Just thought I'd replace the nuts that were knackered to try and keep the axle to a good spec and try and keep put it together and make a good job. That's the three nuts swapped over there. So they're nice and tight. So that's that bit done. So this drum here has um, well, it's been on there a long time. It's obviously seen an interesting service life as it's all beaten. You see where someone's been smacking the hell out of it with a hammer to get it off in the past and just left it all chipped and broken. Well, that can go in the scrap trailer. So what have we got here? We've got the, I think it's 11 inch front drums on this one because I denoted this came out of a series three. So it's got the bigger front brakes on it. It's not the original front axle. So the shoes, as they, well, they do look good, but I've got all new just to make a nice job with it. So we'll pull those apart and see what we're left with. So you can see someone's been in here before because they've welded the little adjuster snail back on. Obviously it come off. Shoe. Good. So 
that's the nuts off the wheel cylinder. Give her a tap. Loosen it up a little bit. Have the two little spring washers before they go flying onto the floor. Top one undone and gone. Let's have a look at getting the bottom one done. Right, so that is the bleed nipple out. We'll stick that on the side and the old cylinder out. Let's see how solid they are, so cool. We now have a back plate that's a bit grotty looking. Get some um, brake cleaner on that and a wire brush, and we'll see if we can get that better. just as a bit seized in. I'm going to put some heat into it to see if it will free. Have to get some more grip from the bolt for a bit better purchase. Oh, she's going. Turns a lot easier with this banner now. Good. So this up the top one seems to be sound. I'll put some spray grease on it just to make sure that stays free. But that one's good. It's kept the dirt out though, which is nice to see. Looks like we've got a split pin through there. Look at that. on that. There's the old split pin out. That's that drive assembly off. Luckily the splines look really good in there, which is nice. socket for these generally it fits defenders discoveries but because this has the slightly longer shaft in it it won't go on so the socket they're bloody good here oh that looks mint in there full of oil as well which is nice what with the vehicle that sat for so long you don't know if the bearings are going to be pitted, they're going to have gone round and picked up on anything. To be honest, they look absolutely mint. It looking a bit nicer. <laughs> oh dear. So having cleaned all that off and um, cut the brake pipe and stuff off, I have got the two new wheel cylinders in and one shoe is on. I've taken the bolts out of the block on the top of the swivel there 
and um, put the two new lock tabs on because that was just rusted through. This is what I was dealing with, just rot rotten old rubbish. I've painted up the swivel housing as well. Um, so that's looking all right. I'll have a look at putting the other shoe on. Uh, that one's on with the minimum adjustment set for the time being. So here's the other shoe with the spring. Hopefully that will hook in nicely. Fine with these Land Rover ones, it's easiest to hook the rubber boot off the wheel cylinder and push the boot over the shoe first, otherwise it tries to trap the boot in the um, cylinder groove there and doesn't go all the way home. Pushed in on the cylinder and then you can just hook the boot back on. Job done there. She's on the spring and she's on the top mount on that cylinder there as well. So I have a new hub seal here that I'm going to replace in the back of a hub there as that one was done who knows when. Um, so we'll just get a tool and remove that seal. There we go, it just pops out. So does the dog. So that old seal, which is rock hard. In the bin, I'll give that a little throw out and wipe, wipe that off without there. Gives us a chance as well to have an inspection of our inner wheel bearing. These wheel bearings look really good. I'm really happy to reuse those, they're mint. There's nothing wrong with those at all. They can stay in there. all the way home. What we'll do is put a smear of grease on that hub seal there just so it's got a bit of lubrication on it. Washer. I'm pulling the near side front side of the axle apart. I've got the drum off, which took a lot of beating with the big old hammer, but that came off. I'll just say, look. And um, I got this cap off, which was an absolute pain. That was really, really stuck on, as you can see. It started to fold the edges, but eventually it came with a pop and it was full of oil. So you can see here that that nut's worked its way loose a little bit and. Um, just weep some oil past it. So I've just cleaned that up, knocked the split pin out. We'll try and knock that nut off and um, see what this side looks like. I oh, will clean all these bits up. That's got the washer stuck on it. Yeah, that's obviously passed a bit of gear oil through, or axle oil through the centre there because that had come undone a bit. That's okay, we'll pull these bolts out of here, pull the drive shaft flange off and have a look at undoing the wheel bearings, the hub nuts, take the bearings out and then when this is back to a bare stub axle again I can clean all of that up and just give the inside a quick coat of black and start to rebuild this side with the new internals. So I stripped this side down, I've got the hub off wasn't too bad, got the um, shoes out of there, they were pretty grim looking, just down there, they all came off and I'm just sort of seeing what we've got, the wheel cylinders, obviously all this lot scrap, so we'll pull the cylinders off, pull all this brake pipes and stuff off, I've got the tabs, lock tabs to replace on this side as well. And I'll get in there with the wire brush, I think, try and tidy up the back plate and um, get a thin coat of black paint on there just to coat it up. See if the adjusters are nice and free or not. I'd imagine they're partially seized as the other side was. 
Um, yeah, so I'm going to need some tools to undo those cylinders next. Let that soak in. We'll have to undo the um, brake pipe unions. I don't think they're going to come undone, but it doesn't matter if they just snap off. So I'm making all new pipes. In fact, I'll probably just cut those off if they don't want to come. It's not too much of a problem. As long as they come undone. There we go, one manky old cylinder. He's fit for the bin. Slowly but surely this one's coming, bit by bit. And do the other one. Ah, no, there she goes. The other manky old wheel cylinder. Right, we can start cleaning this up now. It's cleaned it up no end. Put a spanner on these adjusters, see if they're going to give. Oh, yeah, he's a bit tight, he's going. They should be fairly stiff and fairly firm so that they can hold the adjustment on the um, brake shoes. They shouldn't be seized solid, that's for sure. Yeah, that one's tight. Keep going. Let the maintenance spray in there. Better. So, after doing all my research on this axle, it's turned out it's a Series 3 axle, which I thought it was from the start. Um, but it is a late Series 3 from 1980 onwards to 85. And it's, I believe it's an MOD Land Rover spec axle. Um, but I dare say I might be wrong there. A little bit of aerosol black here. Just um, I did run a bit of brake cleaner over this just before I painted it, just to get any of the penetrating oil or grease off this. Oh, looks a bit better. Got a few more bits come in for it and what we're trying to do i've got the diff plate um, now the pan so i'm going to drop the oil out of the axle and hopefully make a start changing this plate over that's rotted through luckily it has withheld some of its oil in there and hasn't lost all of it so that is good from well, that's a good sign because that's full of oil still it was obviously just started weeping probably where she's been moved about a bit I've disturbed the rust on the front pan here and it's um, pushed it through but I'm happy to see that that had loads of oil in it bit off. Well, that's off now. We've got the new one. I'll clean all this up thoroughly and block all the diff up so I can't put anything accidentally into there when I'm welding. So I'm just pushing the plastic bag. I've fed it over the top of the crown wheel and wound it in just so it's covering over. 
pushing that in just so I can cut the remnants of the um, diff face pan off. So after extensive cleaning up around the um, actual face, I'm ready to weld the new diff pan on. What I have done is just cleaned all of the powder coating off. Just gone around it with a angle grinder to just with a flat wheel in it to tidy it up. Got it so it lines up, and I've marked it with some chalk or some crayon, yellow crayon. And I'm gonna have a look at tacking it on. Unfortunately, my camera's flat all the time, so we'll um, see how we go. I'm just tacking it at the top first. Um, just to make sure it's um, held into position. It's all marked up and not touching anything. I've just spun the diff over, which is nice. And then what I plan to do is seam weld the bottom in one continuous weld all the way around up to there and there, and hopefully bridge over the top, just keeping the weld continuous so that it seals it up. And we'll have a go. So I've got the diff pan all seam welded all the way around now. Um, I had the welder turned up a bit and I've, yeah, I think I've made an alright job of that. Um, we'll see, I'll put some oil into it and um, when it, once it's cooled down and um, see if there's any leaks. But I think that's a million times better than it was anyway, it's not all rotten through now. And once I've checked that that is nice and sealing oil and holding oil without it dripping out. Shouldn't take long to tell. I'll bang some in it and then leave it upright. Um, when I've confirmed that it holds oil without leaking it, I will um, get some chassis black on it, I think, and paint it all up. So I've inspected the axle this morning after leaving it all night with some oil in it. And I've had a tiny bit of a weep um, just at the bottom here. So I've just cleaned it all out this morning, tipped the axle up, let the oil drain to the back and then put just a blob of weld over it and that seems to have sorted that out as I've had it leaning down with all the oil back on it all day so that seems to be good so I've just opened the can of chassis black just painting it up give it a bit of coat of protection while it's all apart I've opened up the new wheel cylinders, now the paint's gone off on this, I'll have a look at fitting these up. Cleaned up the nuts and the washers that were holding it on. Top wheel cylinder on. Bottom one in. Two cylinders are on there. We'll look at hooking the shoes up next. Inside hooked in. over the cylinder back like that. All we need to do is just turn the cylinder on this bottom one as it's there we go. So twist it a little bit out. located nicely in the cylinder there and put the boot back on. Just adjust 
just the adjuster out. There we go. In. As far as it goes, that's looking pretty good at that. New cylinders on, new shoes on. We'll have to look at um, making up some brake pipes sooner rather than later. But well, I'm quite happy with that. That's, that's looking okay. So I've got my hub through the parts washer all cleaned up nicely. Um, what you want to look for in the wheel bearings is any pitting or rusty marks on the rollers uh, and they themselves look really really good. Also on the wheel bearing races in the hub you can see you want to look for any staining or marks where especially when a vehicle's been stationary for such a long time marks that have formed around where the rollers have sat uh, and rusty bits because they can cause issues but they look perfect so I'm quite happy to reuse those bearings have a look at packing them with some grease and get them reinstalled. The other thing you can do is just push the bearing in and just spin it by hand just to check how it rotates. If it's nice and smooth, as it should be, then that'll do well. A bit of grease from the bearings in. So by palming the bearing in, I'm pushing the grease in through the back end and providing it uh, all around the rollers in the bearing. So that's pushed plenty in there. That's a nice greased bearing. I will stick a load of grease in the center of the hub so that can work its way around as and when it needs to. Pop that in. That's nicely packed. Whilst at this stage, when you have covered in grease, you might as well pack the other bearing as well this is going to be a gloves in the bin job in a sec. Might as well get this grubby bit done. So it's all your bit done. Seal. Not the easiest, um, well, easy enough to source when I realise what axle I've had. goes all the way home on the seal, push the outer bearing in, throw the wolf of the dog, we've got this washer here, he goes on next. Find if you rotate the hub a couple of times, just whilst that's all settling in with the grease, you will get another quarter or so turn out of the nut. Just using my water pump pliers to. Take a roller so they don't go up tight tight but you just I tend to find you just want to take it so it just starts to feel a little bit of pressure there and that's spot on. Don't want the hub rattling but that feels good to me. Lock washer and the second unit. Thank you. 
fold those tabs over in just a sec. That's the hub coming together. I'm just going to knock the lock tab over. Looks like we've got one. Just using a hammer and a chisel to fold the top tab over. Do that with that one, and then with the bottom one, you can usually just use a lever bar. See where it is on the flat of the nut, and get it starting to fold towards where you want to go over the nut. And hopefully, this will work. to jack this up on the crane but try and get it a little bit more secure because it was um, I'll say it was wobbling about quite a bit right, so that's on the flat of that nut as well good a new paper gasket on there Isolated nut with a split pin. Just looking to try and get it nicked so it's just pinching on there without um, being too loose. And so you can also get the split pin through. I wonder where the split pin hole is. Place. There we go, I think that's spot on. Grab a new flip in for that. it a little bit to get it off. I'm just going to put it through the parts washer to clean out any gunk that's sitting in it. Put that over to my vice. Try and tap it down. So it's not the um, best condition part in the world but that will certainly go again. It's not got any holes in it. It's obviously been on the truck for a long time. I'll just push it through the wire wheel quickly. Well, that, as you can see, is cleaned up all right. Good enough to go back on anyway. What you got, Pixie? Mm. That's all the way home. Looks all right. So I've got a bit of um, brake cleaner I'll just clean those new shoes off with. any manufacturing grease or wax oil or anything that might be on them. Uh, again, just um, brake clean of them off and I've clear coated them just so hopefully they stay silver. And they might not, but they look quite cool like that, so we shall see. Now hopefully this will just go straight on. I know the other side was reasonably tight to fit there. screw. Pretty good. 
good, good start anyway. We'll see what sort of a pedal we get once it's in. So next stage on the axle is um, I'm putting some swivel grease into the swivels here, but some CV grease into the swivels. This is a one shot swivel housing grease for the Land Rovers. I use this on the Discoveries. Uh, I know they're supposed to, they do have oil in from um, factory, but I find the oil just leaks out because it's too thin past the swivel housing seals. I've had a quick look in here and this has been bone dry. The grease will um, certainly lubricate the CV joint and the bottom bearing on the swivel housing. So I've got another one here. I'll just snip this open and um, we'll have a look at just putting a little bit more in here. I can see it's pretty much up to the filler plug hole anyway. So. in there, not a lot, but it's got something in there which is better than nothing. The other side was completely bone dry. Getting some grease in this one. Usually these are a one shot sort of amount, measured amount, so it will fill one swivel housing which is good, so you know. It's going to take all of that pretty much. So this side had a little bit in there, but it didn't have a lot. Cool. Let's put the filler plug back on this one. So last job to do with the axle is the spring lock bushes. Then it can go back under the landy I Got some um, steering track rods and drag link um, joints on order. So they'll be with me hopefully in the week. So I can swap them over and have the steering arms off it and um, clean them up and paint them so that they're looking nice again. But that's not bad. Looking at this tool here for pushing in ball joints that are on bottom arms. Um, I'm going to try and use that to push the spring bushes in and out. Well, mainly out the old ones out of the axle so we'll get a socket for it and um, see that it goes through I do believe the spring bush fits through there so we'll have a look Spring eye bush, anyway. Bush number two done. The old one. They weren't um, weren't long for this world. Those ones. Well, that looks to have just pushed. Yeah, that's pushed the centre of the bush through. So I'll clean that up and see if we can get the outer bush uh, on the new one to push it. Another one out. That wasn't great. Good. Bush number four in. That's all that was left of that one. Not a lot. <laughs> Well, we have an axle now that's ready to go back in the Land Rover, so that's the next job. We'll have a look at that. 